The feed of profit calculator is one of those sort of tools. So I'm going to let you see behind the curtain of this thing we call the ITS feed of profit calculator, and we'll see you. By the way, if you have a question, if it's really burning and pressing, just raise your hand and ask, because the likelihood of me stopping uh, for any length of time is pretty limited. Uh, my math runs pretty fast, and I'm sorry if you can't understand me. I'm a hillbilly from Missouri, so those kind of things happen. So, yes, there you go. Somebody gets it. All right, so you all know these men just told you. And I was telling some folks here a couple weeks ago that had to see this, or at least a similar talk. We need to own this situation so we can know why it's important to implement tools like the profit calculator, or maybe another hit tool or two I'll hint at. So just real quick, let me show you what we got here. This is trends in basic animal protein consumption in the United States since 1960. Goes to about 2015 or so, if I think, on the other end. I know you can't read all these things, so I'll make it really simple. On the top, dark blue. Dark blue represents seafood. Now you all may consume more seafood in this part of the world than the masses, but it's still a pretty small part of our diet. Yellow is turkey. In my lifetime, turkey has went from almost a non-factor, from a percentage standpoint, it has jumped a lot, it's over double. That's big. Still, it doesn't make up a lot of our diet. Okay, so we're not going to spend much time worrying about seafood or turkey. The orange, the one in the middle, that's pork. It is very clear that we like pork because it stayed pretty static through those 40 years. We consume about the same amount, give or take roughly 50 pounds of pork, it stayed pretty static for cattle. Here's where it gets a little ouchy for us. I was four years old in 1976, so some of you can do math, I can't, but you can get pretty close to how old I am. In 1976, we consumed almost 100 pounds of beef per capita in this country. And at that same time, we consumed just a little over 30 pounds of chicken in this country per capita. Fast forward to 2015, that situation is flipped. We consume just a shade over 50 pounds of beef per capita and about 100 pounds of chicken. Ladies and gentlemen, we have got to find ways to get more efficient and do our job better. And it's not for those of you, there are a number of folks in this room who as I start to talk about this tool and talk about the practical applications of genetics, are just going to say, Chip, that's just smoke and mirrors and mumbo jumbo. It's just a bunch of magic math you all do on a computer somewhere. Sorry that you feel that way, I'd like to have a chat with you about it, but I recognize there's a number of you in this room who can have that feeling because you've been around for a while, the place is paid for, cows are paid for, most of the equipment's good, and you can pretty much do whatever you want. And to you I say, congratulations, I hope to be there one day myself. But what I know is that probably above all else, outside of their family and the good Lord above, most cattle and the most important thing to them is that that brand stays on that gate two or three generations down the road. And here's what you and I know. Your kids and grandkids can not do it the same way you did or the way dad did it back in the day and still stay competitive. It's just the way it is. So, I don't know about you, but sometimes I go out with the family and we're looking at cows and so I'm like, oh, I can remember everything about every cow in this pasture. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah I can. And then they start telling me stories, and what they start telling me is the outliers. Yeah, they can remember the year when she sired a bull who talked to say. They can remember the year when she was open because the calf came backwards and it took three guys and a donkey to get that calf out. Okay? They can remember that, but they can't remember everything else. I tell, I, I, I tell our board all the time, I think this book, Moneyball, should be mandatory reading for any serious profit-focused cattleman or cattlewoman. If you've not read it, you should. Um, what it is, is there was a movie, that eh, movie's kind of so-so, but the book's pretty good, okay? And really what it is, is it's a sports story. It's a pretty easy read for a sports story, but the interesting thing is the author quotes one of the subjects of the book, and his name is Paul D. Podesta. Paul D. Podesta was a stats guy for the Oakland A's, and when he was realizing the Oakland A's had no money, and the Yankees and the Red Sox had a lot, he was supposed to try to find a way to compete back in the 80s. And he realized, i got to look at things different. And he thought, well, I can do things the way everybody else is doing. What he found out is when he actually read the numbers, these scouts who had six-figure salaries driving around on expense accounts all the time, they couldn't tell a damn thing about what they were doing. The reality was they couldn't tell any difference. And I think sometimes for us, we do the same thing on our cats. We've convinced ourselves of things that we can't actually prove or quantify. So, we need tools. Let's just be honest with ourselves. We all have a bunch of numbers. Are we actually using them in some sort of tool format this is my dad when I take him to the hardware store. Oh, he loves himself some tools. 
Okay, we're gonna look at drills for hours. Mom may never have to find us again. What tool is this? Gutenberg's printing press, 1400 and so. Changed the world. This is a tool that's a little bit more my speed. It's one I know how to use. So, let's talk about this tool we call the profit calculator. Let me tell you what this machine does. This machine brings together some pieces that you work with all the time at home. Things that they actually were talking about very clearly up here on that earlier panel. Things that you know are real. It highlights known genetics. I know that a lot of commercial folks say, Chip, I don't have time or the desire to track genetics in my cow herd. Okay, that's fine. But you know what, the guy down the road just mine. As we get closer and closer to times, in some, of the, in some parts of the portions of the country and in certain programs, that awareness is already being demanded today. And so many of you are actually customers of a place, as Marty mentioned, is pushing the envelope and putting terminal merit into some cattle. They know your rich numbers. You don't even have to make it very hard. You can just call Michael Rob and they can tell you. Okay? But we need to know your, your genetics. We also need to know your management. You heard some conversation about that up here. We'll talk about that a brief bit more. We, if you know more about your cow herd genetics, we can utilize that. This thing is all powered with the fact that the IGS database is the largest beef genetic evaluation on the planet, by almost twice. And it's made up of a whole host of different breeds, and a lot of breeds that aren't even IGS partners. This one's a key piece. We don't charge a nickel for this tool. So for those of you who thought I came here to sell something, well, that was a pretty terrible job on my part because that plane ticket cost a little bit. I got a pretty darn early to leave Missouri this morning to get here. Um, I'll go home yet today and spend a fair amount of money and I'm not asking for a dollar. So, yeah, I'm a terrible salesman. Why can we give this away for nothing? Because here's the truth. The truth is progressive seed stock folks who are serious about your profit, they're paying for this. Okay? So there is a cost. The commercial cattle is just, and cattle wool is just not bearing it. We're bearing it on these progressive seed stock folks. I'm not gonna spend much time here, but one of the nuances that's, that makes this tool so powerful is if you've changed your cow herd over time, we'll come back to this later if you want, it can, re it can actually reflect the improvements you've made in cow herd for a whole host of traits. We can talk about that later, we'll come back to that if you want to. So let's just get this thing really real and I'll put all these up here and you can start reading them while I'm talking to you. So what's gonna happen here in a minute? We take your known genetics, we take your basic herd health approach and man calf management, and we plug it into this tool. And this tool is gonna to generate a whole host of things that really get boiled down to three values that are important to you. One is a management value. And what is, what's gonna happen here is it generates biological predictions on the feedlot and carcass performance of your calves. Okay, so we use what you tell us about your cattle, and we are predicting the biology on those calves. Once we do that then, we can look at the predicted break-even on those cattle. Now, we're comparing the break-even on your cattle that came through the system through to a couple averages. One, we, did, we have set the average calf in the industry as, having a 60, as being 60% weaned for 30 days or more, and 60% vaccinated for BRD meaning that we're saying that we think 60% of the calves in the country are weaned for 30 days or more before they're shipped. You could probably argue accurately that might be a little bit high. Um, you might be right, but that's still the base we have set. And that we're arguing that 60% of the calves are vaccinated for BRD. Again, certain regions that would be low, certain regions that would be high. Frankly, in your region, in certain pockets, that would be a little bit low. If I went to the southeast part of the United States, that'd be pretty high. So there's some give and take on that. But that is our base that we have set. You might say, well, why did you look at that? Why are those your two things for herd health and management? Frankly, we had two of the most renowned scientists in the country dig into the data. David Allman at OSU, Oklahoma State. Max Pangler at the University of Nebraska. Those men poured through the data in the scientific literature because we need something to stand on. If we can't just throw out numbers and make them up from thin air, we have to have something to stand on. And those men come to the strong conclusion that the following thing has happened. As you heard up here a brief one minute ago, if you wean those calves at home for 30 days or more, there is a distinct decrease in the mortality and the morbidity of those calves. We all know that, right? We know it. 
lot of us still have freedom on diesel fuel, but we know it to be true. The other thing is, the literature says there is a distinct decrease in mortality and morbidity if those calves are doubly vaccinated for BRD. Again, we know that. It's the biggest cost in our industry from a health standpoint. And so we have to own those things, and so we built this in. If you have done those things, you get reflected positively. If you haven't, then it reflects appropriately. Your genetic value. Again, this is a break even from the average animal. What's the average animal? Well, I think it would be silly to not at least have a high percent of Angus in that average animal, right? 75% roughly of the calves that are harvested in this country at present are Angus side. Just the way it is. Pigs, by the way. Question. What's the terminal breed in this country? What's a terminal breed? When I was in 4-H or FFA, what was the terminal breed? Pretty much a continental, right? I'd argue the terminal breed in this country, I don't even think it's close. It has to be Angus. How could it not be? If 75% of the cats that are dying are sired by Angus bulls, what's the terminal breed? It's not an that's not a good or bad thing, it's just an observation. Okay? What breed has probably selected more for carcass traits in the last 15 years? Any other breed? I think that would highly be Angus. Now, are there trade-offs for that? I think we all know there is, right? If I select for terminal value all the time. There are going to be some traits. That's, again, that's not a knock. It's just an observation. We have to use our tools appropriately. But we respect and see the value of Angus genetics in our industry, and so we've set our average genetic profile as the average Angus profile. Then we combine those two things for a total relative value. So this is how this works. If you're a commercial cattle or cattle, and you want to know what the ITS feeder profit calculator says your calves are worth relative to the average feeder calf in the industry, you simply go to this website, it's called internationalgeneticsolutions.com. I know you probably can't read it, but it is up there on the top. And you go up, you go to that website, and up at the top right, there's a little link, you click on that, it says Feed Your Profit Calculator. You go there, there's a little input sheet. Probably for most of you, it take 15 to 20 minutes to put the data in on your calves. It can take longer if you have large bull bags. This is the very first certificate. This tool has only been live since the middle of July. I want to tell you about this certificate because it's actually important. Not only is it the first one, so that's interesting. Not only would a number of you know the man who turned this in, I've never asked him if I could use his name, so I'm not going to tell you who it is. Trust me. Many of you know who it is. Okay? And he's not in this room, by the way, so I'm not trying to hit him. Very first so here's what happens. The day we turned this tool on live, we hadn't even made anybody aware that the ITS profit calculator went live. We were going to do a soft launch. We could test it a few times behind the scenes. We tested it over and over and over, but now we got it real, so we wanted to check it one more time. Within about an hour of that link going on that website, this gentleman hit it, which told me, because he knew this was coming, he was watching for it. And he hits it, and he sends me some information on a set of cans. And I, of course, I've got his name blocked out up there on the top, and I also got his address blocked out because some of you might even know it by that. But this is the information that came in on his cat. Everything that you put in the profit calculator gets put on this form, meaning the number of head, are they steers, are they heifers, um, your herd health. You, I know you can't read all of that, but it, from here it says that these were a set of 850 pound steers. They're black and red. They're all pole. They were born from April, uh, from February to April of this year. They were weaned in the middle. They're going to be weaned, and they were in the middle of September. And then when we put in the genetics, which show up on another sheet, it turned out that these scans were about 48% Angus, 35% Simmental, and about 16% Red Angus, and a couple fractions of some other stuff. Below, you see the herd health, a couple different vaccination dates, and what was given, deworming implants, and the like. Here's the money shot, okay? These pieces take the place of those biological predictions that I told you that were predictive biology, okay? I'll talk about those more in a second. So I sent him this certificate, and I said, well, what do you think? He said, I think that's, this is, a, again, trust me, this is an individual who gets it and knows. And I think that's pretty accurate. You're essentially saying that my calves on the date they would sell at a sale barn or on an online auction would be worth roughly $10 more to 100 or at least the break even would go $10 more to 100 higher than the average Angus calf of 60% weaned and 60% vaccinated. So that's what I'm saying. I said, now recognize I'm not saying that the buyer's going to pay another $10. 
Because what's the buyer want to do? Make money. Make money. Right? Same as you want to do. So he's not paying $10 more to break even. That would be dumb. But if he has a high degree of confidence in your cattle, and there's two groups of black calves right there, or in this case, two groups of black and red calves, they look alike, they both weigh 850 pounds on that given day, and he knows something about these and nothing about those, might he go another three or four dollars on these? We hope. That's the goal, right? Is so that we provide pervasive awareness of true feeder cat value. So that you have an opportunity to put a third party validation that says, I have worked hard to put value into my cats. And then from the buyer's perspective, he doesn't want a sales pitch. He doesn't want a charlatan selling him something. He doesn't want a bunch of pom-poms. He wants a third party saying, there's profit in these cattle, go get them. This is why we think then that we can go out there and move this tool over time so that we can help get some pull through. Let me go one step further though with this particular certificate. Because of who this individual is, and trust me, he's an influencer, I said I want to do you a favor though because, just because. So I'll tell you what you do. Oh, so no, let me back up. So he surprised me, I forgot the, the punchline of this deal is. So he sends me this information. As soon as I send this back, he said, look great, I love it and all, but these cattle all died two months ago. This is last year's data. He was tested. That's okay. Hey, that's good. And if man, uh, he's given some tests in his day. I'm just saying. And so, did I pass? He said, I think you did. I said, well, let's prove it. He said, since they're dead, I said, will you share with me the carcass data and the feedlot performance on these cattle? He said, will. I said, turn, I'll trade. I will share you the numbers that make up these star metrics. He said, deal. So here's what happened on our very first certificate. These cattle came through. His, those cattle, we predicted them 92% choice. They went 90 and a half. Yield grade wasn't an issue. They were all lean cattle. Um, yield grade, I mean, uh, average daily gain, we were off by 1700s. By feed conversion, we were off by 1200s. Hot carcass weight, we were six pounds heavy. He's like, that'll do. He said, you ought to know one more thing. He said, as impressive as those numbers are, he said, we actually shipped the cattle about a week early because there were some health issues on the other end of the yard and we didn't want to get these cattle. So you're probably right. They probably would have been just a little bit heavier. They might have graded just a little bit more. And they probably would have, their conversion probably would have started to slow just a little bit that last week. So he was pretty pleased. We were pretty pleased with our first validation of this deal. So real quick, I want to run through how this works. This is a piece you wouldn't see. But this is the software behind the background. And I know you can't read all this, but I want you to know, you know at, at IGS, at ASA and IGS, there is nothing inside of a black box. There's no curtain that's pulled. We put it all on the table so you can see it. If you want to come up to the computer later, I'll pull all this up so you can see it and look at it close. But I just want you to know what's happening here. So when you give me this information, then all I go to do is I go to this interface and I put in the gender, the weight of the cast. There's a couple little boxes up there that I can check. One if they've been weaned for more than 30 days, one if they've been vaccinated twice for BRD. And so in this case, those little boxes aren't checked, so it's saying these calves were not tended to very well. But unfortunately, this producer, in this hypothetical situation, had invested in a heck of a bull battery. You can't read it, but what this says is this is the reg number for a bull uh, called Upgrade. If you know the Simmental deal at all, you know that bull. This is a walking son of Upgrade. Right here is Hook Shear Force. There's a walking son of Shear Force. He's invested in good genetics. His cows, in this case, are some red balancer cows. That piece down there is just this blown up so you can see. So what happened is, this individual, and now this is kind of a nice little academic discussion. These cattle are four and a half dollars above the average cap for genetic merit. But because he didn't do anything from a management standpoint, he's back nine dollars. What's that mean? To the buyer, that's a huge deal. Because what's the buyer saying? If you don't manage these cats, I take all the risk. I take all the health risk. And so there has to be something accounted for in that. And so, even though good bulls, he's still backwards. Now, same bull battery. This time he still didn't tend to health, but he was at least able to pull up a few maternal grandsires. You all can't see those, I get it. Uh, you can look at them closer if you want. Those are very prominent red bulls of some yellowies and some red angus. Prominent with a lot of terminal value. But when to do different breeds so you can see, we can do essentially any breed type in here. That's not an issue. Okay, as long as they're known cattle, we can use them. Now, 
He has a lot of awareness, even to the point that you can see his genetic value is nearly $8 a hundred more than the average cat. And this is provable, repeatable stuff. The problem is he's still done nothing from a health standpoint, and so he's still backwards in the average cat. One last time. Now he's done his job. Okay? Up to this point he was being like me, he was being lazy. Now he's done his job. He's holding those kids for 30 days. He's been vaccinated twice for BRD. You can't really see the boxes up there very close, but they're checked. Now, we can capitalize on what these calves done, have done for us. Okay? So now, we're showing that those calves from a break even standpoint in this hypothetical kind of extreme situation are worth 14 bucks more than the average cat. That's 112 bucks difference. Now, would you expect to get all that? No, that would be silly. Might you get another 40 of that? I'll take that. I will take that every day. So, why are we showing this to you now? Before I get to this next slide. Because this is a brand new launch of a brand new software that's getting, it's getting a lot of attention, okay? I'll just tamper my words. It's getting a lot of attention. If you're a buyer, you've been waiting your whole career to find some tool that can help you truly identify which cattle I don't want or which cattle I'm going to penalize a lot to buy. They've been waiting for this for a long time. And so if they believe in this tool, this is something they've not had in their arsenal yet. So, why show it to you now? Because let's face it, this is going to be a two or three year lift to get this thing to take traction. Looking at it now, looking at your cattle now, gives you some awareness. So should you feel like there's a reason for you to modify some things or add some different pieces to your operation, you can do that. I want to show you that we can do different kind of breeds. Here's using some Angus bulls. If this tool couldn't do Angus cattle, it would be a useless tool because we've got to be able to do Angus cattle. So, again, I just cut off the top because it, it just clouds up the screen. You can't see this very well, but this says $12.61. Again, in this fairly extreme hypothetical, this is an elite set of Angus bulls. I'll tell you who they are in case you can't read that because you can't. Gardner Momentum, anybody's familiar with from an elite Angus standpoint because I said we're using Angus. Mason Payway, and a bull called Keneally Powers. All high terminal value Angus bulls. In that case, we're on black baldy cows. 1261 over the average. Here we're on straight Angus cows, essentially the same number, 1270 something. Now, here's what the foremans have been teaching you for a while. Breed complementarity and heterosis, it works. I'm gonna stand here as a breed association person and you can go ahead and throw stuff at me if you want. But those folks who have preached for years, for the last 20 years, we've heard charlatans preach at you that you need to be straight bred all the time. Now, I'm not saying there's not a place for that, okay? If you have a niche program where you're, you need to be straight bred, good, not so bad. Sometimes a seed stock producer needs to do that to do their job. But if you're a commercial producer and you're running straight bred cattle, it is absolutely, definitively clear you are leaving money on the table. There's just no debate about that. History says that. Grandpa knew that 40 years ago, and the science is unequivocally clear. Crossbred cows last longer. In fact, a crossbred cow will easily generate up to $200 more over her lifetime because of calves. You should just have more calves. She stays around longer. She's sounder. It's just the way it is. And a crossbred calf, responsibly crossbred with some continental and some British, they just weigh more. It's just that simple. And so here, with just a touch of scimitol, we make quarter semi calves, we've upped this hypothetical two bucks. Let's talk real opportunities here at Trinity Farms. So what I did was I asked them to share me some information on cats, some of the cats will be available next spring. So, this is a cat that's good with that potential mating of that young cat. A lot of five stars in that one. Here's that same bull if I put him on just a little bit of continental. If you put some Simangus stuff in your herd over time, or from the Trinity, or maybe you have some other continentals in from different sides, we jumped this up over two bucks. Why did we do? If you want to look at the specifics, because you can't, I know you can't see it. Essentially, what we did is we fixed yield grade a lot, a lot, and we made carcasses a lot heavier. Here's another bull. So, there we go. This bull is, uh, if I recall, 3.8 scimitol. That's on a straight Angus, 1180, 100 over the average cap in the industry. Put that one on a sim Angus. It backs up just a little bit. It probably should, right? Because based on the opposite side of the last time, we need that appropriate amount of continental. But essentially, these two stay about the same. It's a little over 11 bucks over the average. Now, some of you, 
especially in this world, let's face it, you're running bull bags. Okay? So you can say, well, Chip, it's all lovely. You can sit there and show me one bull at a time, and that's great. But that's not the way we do it here in Washington. Look at that. So, we can account for a bull batter. Here in this case, we put in three bulls, not those two that we just talked about, but three other bulls from uh, Trinity that will be available for next spring. And uh, there's an aviator and a sandstorm and, a, and another uh, high percentage seven, or lower percentage Simmental bull. And I want to teach you something with this one, though, if you don't mind. Actually, maybe you can teach me. What we've got here is we're using tremendous bulls. You'll see it in a second. But for this demo, you've not weaned your calves and you've not vaccinated your calf. So you came over here to Foreman's and you invested in good genetics. You did your job on sale day, but didn't you do your job at home. I bred those to straight Angus cows. You can't read it, but trust me, what it says is the genetic value of those calves is about four and a half dollars over the average calf, but because you didn't do your health, you're still backwards of four bucks. So, we can make changes. So let's just say in this case, we vaccinated them we're still not keeping them around for 30 days. We're going to give them their BRD, but they're leaving at weaning time. This will get better. It's the same set of bulls, Angus. We at least got on the right side of zero. But we have bought really good bulls, and we're leaving too much on the table because we're not keeping them for 30 days. We're at least not considering the trade-off in dollars if we were to keep them around for 30 days. Same three bulls. I just blew it up a little bit more for you on this one. This one, you did vaccinate. You did keep them for 30 days. Ten dollars, a hundred, just by doing the full package. Then all those three men just stood up here and told you, you've got to do those things. It's not a surprise to any of us. We just now have a tool that can help us quantify what it means if you do or you don't. And soon enough, buyers are going to see the same tool. Interestingly enough, and you heard them talking about this up here. How many of you? Are, how many of you make your own replacements? Yeah, I know, everybody's like this, Catlin. Like, we don't divulge a sacred to a soul on the planet, right? We're not gonna do it, okay? Because we all did this. But there's a whole bunch of you did something that looked a little bit like this. Now, I'm sure you will get maybe purchase all your females, but I bet you the exception in this room. Most of you are keeping dollars. We have to be cautious. The feeder profit calculator is the sharpest terminal tool that the beef industry's ever had. It makes dollar beef look like a pup when it looks at true terminal value. Dollar beef's a great tool. It's not a great tool to select cows, by the way. That steers with uteruses. That doesn't work as well. It's a terminal tool. The feeder profit calculator as well is a terminal tool. We have to be cautious. And if you're somebody keeping daughters, if you're going out there, practically speaking, this tool rarely, rarely gets higher than 11 bucks or so in a real world situation. That's a pretty high number. Most of them are much lower than that. When you see a $10 bill in here, that's a great number. That's not just a good number, that's a great number. But you have to keep into thought what are your daughters gonna look like, especially if you're keeping SIDS. So this bottom piece is important. I don't know how many of you know what API is. It's an index that the foremans can use because they're in the Simmental platform. It's a female longevity index is all it is. And so here's the cool piece of this one. This pool Bull battery will not only generate you feeder calves that have tremendous value, but all of these bulls are in the top 10% for daughter longevity measures. That's money. Now we're making it on both sides. Not just feeder calves, but we're building some longevity into our cow herd. Now I want to take it one step further. Now let's assume you've been a long-term customer of Foreman's. And I know you can't see this, so you can come get my computer later and see it. But what we have now is those same three bulls that you could buy next spring. And we put in five years worth of hypothetical maternal grandsires. And those maternal grandsires are actually only three bulls represented there. Two bulls are used two years, and one bull is only used one year. These are all bulls that have been sold from Trinity Farms in the last seven or eight years. So again, if you're a long-term customer, you're coming here buying bulls, you're making cows out of those sires, and they're in your project. They're in your, they're in your program. You may not be able to see that number on the bottom, but this is where it gets significant. The more data you know and you have and you can quantify, the more power you have because now those same bulls with a good herd health standpoint and preconditioning, $13.
in a, in a, in a commercial setting, I'll be honest, I have not generated a certificate to this point that's got to $13. Not one. That's huge money over the average cap. So, that's an example of what you can get. And again, I can't help but remind you, it's the same three sires. All three of those sires, again, are going to produce great daughters at the same time. So, how would you get to that maternal grandsire piece? I've talked to two or three of you individually. This is not what this program is about. But again, if you want to know how to capture extreme data on a commercial caliber, I'll just tease this little piece right here. You can talk to me later if you want. But we're in an era when we can give commercial cattlemen and cattlewomen serious caliber knowledge. All the things that used to be reserved for serious seed stock folks, you can now have. Not serious. This is not just, oh, a chip. You can wax and have everyone know it. It's the truth. We can put EPDs and indexes on your cattlemen. And you know how much it costs a commercial person to do that? $500 a year. That's like that many T posts, give or take. We throw away that much money on nearly a monthly basis doing something. Those of you who are crop farmers, and we were chatting in the back, uh, a savvy young man and myself, um, he was the savvy part, I was not. And, and we were talking about the fact that when it comes to those of you who are involved in, in, in a cropping operation as well, you use every conceivable tool available on Mother Earth to advance your operation. Genetics are tremendously controlled. Now, most of you may not be actually the ones who control that. It may come from a step above you, but the genetics are controlled highly. Customized for your environment. Okay? You put in all the herd health stuff on there. You spray stuff on that. You do whatever you need to make that crop as successful as it can be. And you document the heck. That's all this is. Is we keep track of our genetics. We keep track of our health. And actually write it down somewhere. And for $500 a year, you can use the same tools. Pick your seed stock reader. Um, again, it can be Trinity Farm Foreman's here. It can be somebody up the road and um, down the road in Montana or Idaho. It can be somebody like Park Gardner down in Kansas. It can be whomever you want. You can have as much awareness on your cow herd and easily in three to four years as they have on theirs. And you will do it for a fraction of the cost. A fraction of the cost. In fact, should you have an interest, we can even do genomics and get genomically enhanced EPDs on commercial cows and heifers. Many of you in here, because I've talked to a number of you already, are doing identity tests and the like on your cows. Great. And I know what that means, because we've done it at the house. So you're getting some scores that go from one to 10, right? That's nice. But most of you have got to where you understand what calving ease is, what yearling weight is, what marbling is, and you understand those EPDs. We can take the same cost you put into that identity test, take it through the exact same lab in the exact same firm, turn it around and put it in the backside of genomically enhanced EPDs. Not only do you learn more about your cow herd than you were ever gonna know. Think about this, those of you who are old like me and older, what's it take for us to know if a cow is a good risk? How many years? Let's be honest, it takes at least six or seven years at least to know if she was a good bet, right? To know if her daughters matter. If we can provide your kids or your grandkids tools that can help them not so much identify the top, though it will, but if we can find that bottom 25 or bottom third that we were going to be wrong on, we were going to keep because she looked the part. Man, she looked great. If we can find tools to say she can go to town and replace her with a different group, we are empowering them at a level we never had the opportunity to be empowered. And again, I recognize some of you are like, Chip, I don't care, this is just mumbo jumbo. But you know, as well as you're sitting here, that your kids and your grandkids, if they're going to keep that ranch and that family name, they can't do it the same way you did it 25 years ago. That isn't going to happen. And so, we can leverage things in a pretty powerful way. If you want to talk about that, you let me know. Here's some samples, just some real world samples I just want to show you. We can do anywhere from, this is two sires, I don't know where the little Two sires on an unknown Angus Red Angus City cow herd. You see what it reports. Three sires. Oh, what do we got there? About nine years worth of maternal grandsires. Lots of maternal grandsires. Largest back run in this system, 1,100 bulls. And we can account for them thoroughly. If you have bulls, just again, a few weeks ago did the one with 1,100 bulls. We can pinpoint this thing really accurately. Meaning, if there were three or four bulls that were your AI sires and they represent 60, 65% of your calves, we can adjust them to weight that 
and the other bulls are walking bulls and they get the rest. So we can do quite a little bit in this tool. So that's the feeder profit calculator. I know it's a lot to think about, especially in the afternoon after you had a nice piece of beef and life is good. I would encourage you to at least ponder the thought of looking at how your cattle would stack up in this tool, because trust me, serious players, serious players are looking to put this tool in place. You are getting a heads up. Again, the folks at Trinity, Missouri's not next door, okay? I can tell you what time I got up here time this morning to get here. It was barely this morning, okay? It's a, but it was so important for them to let their customers in on the front side of this thing that they wanted me to be here, and so of course, happy to do so. Got a good steak, that's darn sure they worth it, okay? But I encourage you to at least take the opportunity, go to the system, nobody sees your certificate outside of you and me. I will tell you I see it, because I'm going to probably be the one that does it, okay? But other than that, it's you and me. We're not posting them anywhere. Maybe down the road there'll be some opportunities for that when people want. But right now, I encourage you to at least take a look and see if it makes sense for you so you know where your cats stand. And with that, Marty, I probably went over. I almost always do. I will shut up and take any questions.